Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to the channel. I've gotten a great question today and the question is about bug bounties. You've all heard what you should be doing to get into bug bounties quite often before probably. Maybe there's more information than there has to be about the topic, but what should you avoid when getting into bug bounties, my friends? That's a question I've been getting a lot lately and I want to answer it finally today. So let's get right into it, shall we? One of the very first things that you should avoid is high payouts because high payouts, they don't hand out free money. Usually it is with like a very big strict security program that comes with that bounty. Not only is the bug bounty program going to be very strict, they're probably going to be very strict about the payouts. We only pay out in certain situations or they're very strict security wise. They don't just hand you that money. You're gonna have to fight for it and hard, my friends. So big payout is one to avoid. What else should you avoid? Newspaper bug bounty programs, web shop bug bounty programs, basically business to consumer bug bounty programs. Their scope is gonna be much smaller than a business to business or a business to governance or a governance to consumer governance to business website those are all good websites to get into but business to consumer is one that i would definitely try to avoid mainly because of the smaller scope now another thing you should avoid in my opinion is crowded bug bounty platforms one that i always recommend is integrity but you can very easily google dork you're a hacker if you want to find something you're gonna fucking find it and what are you going to look for you're going to look for that bug bounty program that you want how are you going to get it by google dorking by finding the proper program by going through all of these different programs have you looked at firebounty.com before there's so many programs out there 696 pages of them so I think there is enough to choose from and these are just ones indexed by firebounty.com. There's a hell of a lot out there. So what should you avoid? High payouts, business to consumer. Make sure that you don't go to the crowded bug bounty platform because you'll have a lot more competition there. One other thing that you should avoid is directly hacking, directly going into the attack mode. What I've seen a lot of you do is you start hacking the moment you touch your target or you try to, but how are you going to hack? Define hacking for me. Uh, pause the video, do it. What, what's your definition of hacking? For me, it's just using something in a way that it's not intended to be used. That is one of the core values of the definition of hacking for me. How are we going to use something? that we're not even sure how it's supposed to be used yet. So one thing that NT, uh, NT the Cook Lever, I think is his name, one thing that he always says is RTFM, read the fucking manual, and now RTRFC as well, read the RFC. There are so many good resources out there. Calm down, business logic, broken access control, those are going to be main drivers for your success, especially in business to business programs, in my opinion. Another thing you should avoid is trying to learn all of the web vulnerabilities at once before you start attacking. I know that a lot of you are avoiding that first step or avoiding finding that program and are taking everything in your power to convince yourself that practicing until eternity is a good idea. Well, guess what the bug bounties is for? I have a convincing argument for you. It can be used for practice as well. I think it's very important that you don't underestimate the power that it has to just go into a web application that you don't know, that you don't understand. So understand it, take your time, make sure that you just click through it instead of rushing through the applications and, and stuff like that. And one last thing I will tell you to avoid, I'm going to tell you to avoid your broad scope programs. I may sound like a lunatic right now, but I mean it, avoid broad scope programs in the beginning. All of these things don't mean that you can't pick them up later, but you should take your time and get familiarized with bug bounties first. Why do I say take a main app application? Because you think there's not a lot of scope, but the contrary is true, my friends. There's always a lot of scope, and a lot of these applications also have 
a regular release schedule asking for regular retesting as well. Yes, who can be that retester? Yes, you heard it right, my friend. That can be you. So go out there, avoid these common pitfalls and make your bug bounty journey into success, my friends. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye, amazing hackers.